Okay, so today we're going to look at why you shouldn't back up your computer. I know it may sound strange, but hear me out. All the details coming up shortly. Don't forget to like this video, share it and subscribe to my channel. Doing these three things help us make more great videos for you. So today we're going to discuss why you shouldn't back up your computer. Well, this is something a lot of you may have seen recently if you're running Windows 10 or Windows 11. Now, as you can see at the top of my screen, I've got this start backup button just up there just before the word documents. Now, instinct tells me, yes, I should back up my computer. So therefore I should click on that. Other people have noticed a, uh, a little message in the bottom right hand corner of their screen come up to say, do you want to back up your computer? And again, instinct tells you, yes, you should back up your computer. And us as IT guys are always banging on. We're trying to drum it into you. You should back up your computer. But why if you see this message up here or a message in the bottom right hand corner of your screen in Windows 10 or Windows 11, you telling you to back up your computer, why should you not click on it? Well, if you do click on it, then what's going to happen? It's going to move all of your files and pictures and desktop items into the Microsoft cloud. Now, I know a lot of you don't want your stuff moved onto the cloud. Now, if you're happy with your files being moved onto the cloud, then fine. But hear me out a bit more on this one because it's not always a good idea to move your stuff onto the cloud. Well, so so why not? Well, for one, unless you're paying for a Microsoft 365 subscription, you're only going to have a little bit of storage space, probably about five gigabytes if you're one of the free users. If you've paid for a Microsoft 365 subscription, you're going to either have 200 gigabytes or a thousand gigabytes worth of space. So, yep, that's fine. If you've got 200 or a thousand gigabytes of space, then in all probability, you've got enough room on the cloud to store all of your files. Now, if you've only got five gigabytes, then probably not. By the time what's going to happen is by the time your files have transferred over to the cloud, not all of them are going to make it over there because it's going to run out of space. And then Microsoft are going to be begging you for money to pay for more cloud space. Now, even if you have got the cloud space now to be able to do it, if you've got a Microsoft 365 package, then there's a couple of things you might want to think about. Now, are you always going to have that Microsoft package? What happens? happens if in the future Microsoft decide to put their prices up or you think to yourself, well, actually, I don't use the Microsoft subscription anymore and you cancel it. What's going to happen to all your files then? Well, the ones that are not loaded onto your computer, ones that are just stored in the cloud, you could stand to lose. What happens if at any time your Microsoft account is hacked, hijacked, then again, you could lose your files. What happens if at some point you forget your Microsoft password and you haven't kept up to date all of the methods of recovery for your password? For instance, I went to somebody a little while ago. What had happened was they'd set up a Microsoft account many, many years ago. They've forgotten their password. Their computer crashed. We went to reload everything back on. They've forgotten their Microsoft password. When we went in to try and recover the password, unfortunately, the only method of recovery on there was a very old email address that they haven't got access to anymore. So anyway, we filled out this form with Microsoft, which asked us all sorts of questions like our name, our date of birth, where we live, our address, passwords that we could have possibly used, all sorts of things. And immediately after we submitted that form, it come back to say that we hadn't submitted either enough information or the correct information and basically told us to try again. So we tried again. This time we got an, uh, a message back saying that um, it was being investigated. It was being passed on to someone for investigation and we'd hear back within 24 hours. Guess what? 24 hours later, no email. 48 hours later, again, no email. So we're back to square one. Unfortunately, 
there was just no way of getting this person's files back from the cloud. Now, some of them were retrievable from the PC, but some of the files had been uploaded to the cloud and taken from the PC to try and save space on the PC, to free up space on the PC, as Microsoft call it. Ideally, if you want to back up your files, then really you should have at least three copies of anything important. One copy actually on your computer, one copy perhaps in the cloud, and one copy, say, on a hard disk drive, either stored at your own premises or a, a relative's premises for easy access to. So I'm just going to give you a quick example of what happens, like I say, when you click that start backup. So I'm going to click on it. OK, and straight away. So it says, yeah, there you go. Backup folders on this PC, documents, pictures, desktop. And it also gives us an option to turn on backup for music and videos. So it says files will be backed up, protected and available anywhere in OneDrive personal, even if you lose this device. So, OK, so most people's instinct would be now to click on save changes. If I click on that and then it says they're syncing and what's going to happen is, is suddenly all my files are going to be moved over to the cloud. As you can see, there you go. They've disappeared from the documents folder and then they've reappeared again, but they're now in the cloud. So it says OneDrive is backing up your files. Your files are backing up in the background so you can close this window. When they're done, your files will be available anywhere you use OneDrive. So you can click on view progress there. And there you go. It gives you a, an update on what is happening with the files. Now, luckily enough on my computer, I haven't got a lot of files. So I've I've, I can use the five gigabytes of space. But like I say, what happens if my Microsoft account gets hacked into? What happens if later on I forget my password and can't get back into my Microsoft account? That's it. That's that's possibly could be my backup is, is useless or my backup has, has gone. OK, so it's now it's now actually syncs the files across. So let's just close down this window here. Now, what I've noticed for some people recently when this has turned, uh, when this has moved across to uh, the cloud is sometimes their Outlook stops working. You get a message come up on the screen basically saying that it cannot find your Outlook PST file. Guess why? Because that's moved onto the cloud. And if you're PST file, your Outlook email file is so big, then it won't back up to the cloud anyway, because there's a limit on the size of files that you can back up to OneDrive. And quite often, if you've kept a lot of emails in any of your email folders on Outlook, then it's likely to surpass that limit of the file size that gets backed up to OneDrive. If I scroll down here, you will notice that some of these files have got clouds beside them. Now, that means that that file is only available on the cloud. It's been put on the cloud to try and free up space on my computer which sounds great, but it does mean when we haven't got an internet connection, we can't get to those files. And like I said earlier, if ever we get locked out of our own Microsoft account, there's no way that we can access those files. Now, there's two ways if you have backed up your files to the cloud and you want to keep them there. There's two ways you can ensure that the copy is left on your computer. Now, one of the ways is if there's a few files on there that you think, yeah, I definitely want this particular file to stay on my computer. A backup copy still goes to the cloud, but you still want a copy of this file still left on your computer just in case of any real problems, like I say, you get locked out of your account or you haven't got internet access at some point and you need access to that file, then what you can do is you have to do this for individual files. You can right click on the file and then left click, always keep on this device, left click that. And then what it will do is it will download a copy back to the uh, computer. It'll also keep a copy in the cloud and it will keep it synced up. And as you can see, it's showing there that it's always kept on the computer as well as the cloud, because that 
green tick is completely filled in where the other green ticks where the stuff is actually on the computer and it's on the cloud as well um, you haven't got the green tick filled in so but what if you want everything everything to be kept on the computer and on the cloud well what you can do is you can go into this little cloud icon just down there now if you can't see it down there click on the little arrow pointing upwards you should see it in there mine's got a little blue exclamation mark next to it at the moment and that's because it's it's basically saying that it's got something to tell me but if i click on that cloud there you go as you can see OneDrive appears now i'm just going to get rid of that notice there there you go as you can see my cloud is now restored back to normal now and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to click on the cog up in the top right hand corner there of the uh, OneDrive window that's appeared and then i'm going to go down to settings and left click once on settings and then if i go down to advanced settings and click on the little arrow there scroll down and we've got two options here under files on demand it says onedrive downloads cloud files to this pc the first time you open them to change offline access to all your files select an option below so what i would recommend is if you are keeping your files in the cloud and you've got the space on your laptop or computer's hard drive then click on this download all files okay so it says here download all files this will use up to and on mine it's only eight megabytes of space on this pc and includes files currently set to free up space or online only files download when you're online and then you can use use them offline if we click continue there that will make sure that all the files stored in the cloud will download back to the pc and keep a copy in the cloud as well so if i go back to documents now as you can see there's a green tick and the green tick is filled in which means there's always be a copy kept on the cloud and a copy of the file kept on the computer as well so there we go that means like i say if we get locked out of our microsoft account or we lose access to our microsoft account then we've still got those files now what if you've already clicked on this start back up and suddenly you think to yourself hang on i don't i don't want these files kept in the cloud what happens if you've now surpassed your limit for storage on the cloud then again what we can do is we can right click on the little cloud down there, left click on the settings cog, left click on settings, click on sync and backup. And then what we need to do is we need to go into this here, backup important PC folders to OneDrive, click on manage backup. And then we just need to turn all of these off. So it says, are you sure you want to stop folder backup? When you stop backing up a folder, new files are only saved to your device and aren't available on other devices or protected in OneDrive. So click stop backup. And then we do this for the other ones there. Stop backup, stop backup. There you go. So turn them all off. And then what we do is we go to close and then we close this down and what you will notice now if i go right back to the desktop everything's gone everything's gone off the desktop so what we need to do is apart from we've got this little cloud here so double click on the blue cloud and here you'll see that this was all the stuff that was on my desktop now we need to move it back onto the desktop because it is still in onedrive so what we do is we hold down the ctrl key on our keyboard that's the key in the bottom left hand corner of the keyboard and then tap the letter a a for alpha and then what we want to do is right click on on any one of these files here that are now highlighted and then if you've got a pair of scissors click on the scissors if you haven't got a pair of scissors then click on the word cut that's a left click and then what we want to do is we want to click on desktop just over there on the left or if we haven't got desktop over there on the left click on the cross over there click on any blank area of the desktop and that's a right click click on the little paste icon there but if you haven't got a paste icon there click on the word paste and there you go all your stuff has now been restored and on the desktop and you've got this deleted files removed everywhere so just click got it there and then let's just get rid of this OneDrive little cloud just here 
So again, right click on that. If you've got a bin, click on the bin. If you don't have a bin, then click on the word delete. And the next thing we want to do is we want to go into any yellow folder. So just go down there to the yellow folder. Now go into our documents folder. And as you can see the same with our documents folder, we've just got the shortcut to documents. So our files craftily are still on OneDrive. So let's double click on that. And we want to hold down the control key or CTRL key on the keyboard, tap the letter A, A for alpha or all. Right click on any one of those files. If you've got a pair of scissors, click on the scissors. If you don't have a pair of scissors, click on the word cut and then click on documents just over there on the left. Click the right mouse button in any blank area. If you've got the paste icon there, click on that. If you don't have the paste icon, then actually click the word paste and all your documents will come back. And then we just need to, oh, we need to click got it on this where it says deleted files are removed everywhere. And then we want to just right click on shortcut to documents and then click the bin. But if you don't have a bin, then click on the word delete. And you need to do that for every one of these folders over here. We need to do that for the pictures folder as well. So go into the blue icon just there. Control, tap the letter A, let go of the uh, control key. Click on the right mouse button over any one of those pictures that we've highlighted. Click on the scissors or if we don't have the scissors, click on cut. Click on pictures just over there on the left. Right click on an empty area, click on the paste icon, or if we don't have the paste icon there, actually click on the word paste. And again, we just need to then delete this blue shortcut folder and we just need to get rid of that message by saying got it. And again, check this out for music and the videos folders. If there's if those are still on the cloud, then do exactly the same. The other reason why that I'd also say don't transfer your files to the cloud. If you do use more than one PC and you sign in with the same Microsoft account, then OK, it's going to put all of your files and folders together from both PCs if you back up to the cloud. Now, you might not want that. You might not want to merge the files. I mean, I've, I've had an instance be before where I've been to somebody and their desktop has merged. And what it is, their programs that they've got on the desktop for one machine might not be installed on the on uh, the other machine. So you, whilst you still get the icon come up, the icon is useless or worse still, you might have two machines and the icons, the shortcut icons for apps or shortcuts to things might be in different places. So therefore they're not going to work. For instance, I had uh, somebody a, a little while ago, I went to look at their machine and they had a an, an icon for Google Chrome. Now on the their second machine, they was running a 32-bit system and Google Chrome is stored in a separate folder for 32 bits, the program files x86 folder, whereas on 64 bit systems, it's just uh, stored in the program files folder. So what I did was I deleted the redundant or the, the non-working icon for Chrome on one PC where it wasn't working on and then realized I went back to the other PC, it actually deleted it off of the other PC. So it's not always a good idea to, uh, to, to merge your files and have them on all devices either. Well, I hope you found this video useful. And if you did, consider hitting that thanks button and making a donation to this channel. Or if you want to have a look through my Amazon shop looking for a VPN, Fire TV stick, Fire TV cube or Fire stick accessories, have a look down below. We've got some great links down there for you. Buying, subscribing and donating really does help support this channel. It helps me to be able to dedicate more time to spend researching and bringing you these great videos. Whilst you're here, why not stick around? I've got thousands of other videos for you right here, right now, covering all sorts of subjects. Hopefully, whilst you're here, you're going to find something to educate you, entertain you, amuse you, and maybe even save you some time and money. And if whilst you're looking through my videos, you see something you think your friends, your family, or your work colleagues might like to see, then please don't forget to share these on your social media timelines. If you want to look me up on X, formerly known as Twitter, then I'm at CW Tech, or if you want to look at my website, it's cwtek.co.uk. Thanks for watching and speak to you again soon.